Ooh, the whole thing? All at once? Yeah. It's gonna be a burst of berry deliciousness. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and welcome back to our off-grid homestead that we are building from scratch here in North Idaho. Everybody is gone now, Jules. We've got the house back all to ourselves. Yeah, just the three of us again. One thing that some of the guests that came for the wedding commented on was how when they arrived, things were in different places than they thought they were when they just watched our videos. That's right. So what we thought we would do is give you guys a kind of an overview, an aerial and on the ground overview of our homestead so that you can kind of put it all together so that as you're watching our future videos, you'll know where things Furcher. are, Furcher our Furcher videos. What's a Furcher video? A Furcher video <laughs> is a familiar future video. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just think you just made that up. I just made that up totally. All right, let's uh, come with me, come with me. All right guys, so you are, you're way up there right now, looking down at us, we are in the driveway. And uh, so now we're walking over towards the east and our property line, basically goes from edge to edge on the screen when you're looking at it from the drone. So right in here was where the wedding was. Jules, they uh, they made this beautiful arbor here. Yeah, Sarah and Colin built this arbor and then decorated it with some fabric and also flowers from our garden. And if you haven't seen the wedding, you can go back and watch the live stream because we live streamed the whole thing. That's right. And a lot of you have already done it. 30 some odd thousand, maybe even 40,000 people by now have watched Sarah and Colin get married. So we're cruising over here. We're, we're in the woods. I can, I can see you guys up there. So maybe you can see us down here. But then we're cruising over to the well. We get a lot of questions, Jules, about our well. Yep. It's like 500 and... I forget, 520, 530 feet deep, something like that. Yeah, and we have a hand pump on it as well. This is a simple pump, hand pump. Yeah, so we've got the, the controllers here. The power comes from the house over there, from our solar shed, Whew, comes down here, comes into here. We got disconnect and um, capacitors in there. Comes down here, it's a 240 amp pump down in there, mm, half horsepower. And right now, Jules is pumping away. I'm just curious if we're gonna get any water or not. Oh yeah, oh, there, we, there go. we go. So this is the simple pump, guys. The well head for this is set at 135 feet. There's a rod, that this rod's connected all the way down to the pump way down there. And so it actually pushes the water up instead of like an old style pitcher pump that sucks the water up. This one actually pushes it. You could take a hose from here and you could connect it, where is it, right here, to the hydrant, a frost-free hydrant, <laughs> and then you could actually pressurize the pressure tank that's in the house with the simple pump. Yeah, actually during the wedding, did you know that people came and used the well? No. I forget why. Do you remember huh. why? They need water for the uh, outhouses. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. They Pretty cool. Used it. The water comes out of here nice and clean and cold. And it tastes good too. <laughs> so right here we're at the well and right behind me is basically the easternest side of our property so now we're cruising back across the front of the house going through the front yard right where the wedding was and we're going to cruise over and check out the woodshed first check out the siding that we've done as we're walking across here, the front of the house is completely finished. This right here is a large tree. It loses all of its needles in the fall and um, turns orange like a regular deciduous tree. But it has needles and looks like a pine tree. All right, so the front here, we've got lap siding down here. Up at the top, we've got board and batten and then like a fake single, no, not single, cedar shake. Now we cruise over here to the woodshed. We built this actually last summer with Colin. This guys is the woodshed. Seth and Colin split most of it by hand this summer because well, the wood splitter broke on us and I couldn't get it started again. They're strong young men and could handle that. But the woodshed holds about eight cords of wood. It um, is mostly pine, cedar. Uh, there's some larch in there, some birch, some aspen and cottonwood as well and a lot of fur all right that's the woodshed come with me and we'll move on to the next location but if you notice in the background here 
The north side of the house is not actually sited yet. That should be coming up later on this summer. From our woodshed, we're gonna go ahead and walk west. As you can see, the sun is in my eyes, it's setting. <laughs> and as we walk west, we're gonna run into our solar shed and our solar panels. This right here is the cat door. Watts is named Watts, not because of like Sherlock Holmes and Watts and that kind of stuff. He's named Watts because of solar power and the Watts that you generate. Ray is our other cat that you've probably seen in our videos and she is named Ray because of the sun rays that hit the solar panel. So come on in, I'll give you a quick little glimpse here. So we've got all of our batteries right here. This is a 48 volt battery bank. We've got our charge controllers, distribution center, two inverter chargers that allow us to have 240 volts going to the house. A panel right here goes in the wall, underground and over to the house. Let's come out and look at the solar panels and uh, we'll see what we've got there. This is a DIY solar mount system. We'll be using unistrut and pipe to actually build that. You might notice the angle that they're at right now. It's kind of at about like this. That's the summer position. Come winter, we'll go ahead and adjust that so it's almost vertical because the sun is right at the tops of those trees right there. Hey, by the way, here's Ray. This is our kitty, Ray. I know, Ray. So as we continue on going south, this is the garden right here. And yes, this is an electrified fence to help keep the deer and the moose and the bear out of the garden. Over here is the unfinished west side of the house. We're planning on getting this side sided as well later on this summer going into the fall. I'll just go into the garden real quick and show you around just a little bit. We planted all of our flowers in hopes that we could use them for the wedding. And if you saw the wedding on live stream, you noticed that all the bouquets and everything turned out really good. And we were able to use all the flowers right from here. They're being pretty neglected right now and dying because we haven't been watering them. But this is where we planted all the flowers. Our fruit trees have taken a beating the last couple of winters. We have um, haven't been super good about keeping the moose and the deer out. Hopefully we can be successful this winter, keep the animals out and they'll actually produce fruit next year. Over here are our bees. We have three hives right now and you can hear them. They are very, very active right now. What you guys got over here? Just notice, yeah, Ooh. just notice so many of our strawberries are actually ripe. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. Oh man, those look good. Wow, you want one? Yeah. This one looks super good. Let's give it a try here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good? It's way good. It's way good. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Better than store-bought? Way. Oh. The flowers that are still in the ground that we didn't plant in pots are actually doing really well still. This is a cosmos. We planted a bunch of bachelor buttons because Sarah wanted a lot of blue. And these ones are doing super, super good still. Oh, look it. I forgot one of these noxious weeds. Look at that. It's trying to take over. I'll have to burn that one. There's also a bunch of sunflowers that are still blooming. Bunch of more flowers right there. And then over here, we've got all of our um, other berries like raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries. Woo, there's a lot of raspberries. I think we haven't been out here in a couple of days and actually picked anything. They're small, but tasty. It's nice to come out and you just like forage. It's like whoever gets out here, you get to eat it. Next year, we'll probably have a ton more raspberries because we planted these last summer, I think. Anyway, they've grown a lot this year and then next year, then they should have a ton of fruit on them. The blackberries also have gotten a lot bigger. And so next year, all of these canes here Right, this was non-existent this spring when we started. All of that, all of this, all of that. So hopefully next year they'll have berries on them. Like this one right here. This is the cane from last year. And um, it got broke and didn't do good. But it does have berries on it. So hopefully by fall they'll actually ripen. They're still like way green though. The raspberries though, they seem to get ripe a lot faster. We've been picking them basically all summer. They don't all get ripe at once either. It's kind of like every day you can come out here and there'll be a few more that are ripe. You should put this whole handful in your mouth. Why? Just pop it in. Okay. It's delicious. Ooh, the whole thing? 
all at once? Yeah. It's going to be a burst of berry deliciousness. <laughs> oh, last one. That's mm -hmm. good, huh? Good. And good for you. One more flower that we used a lot in the wedding was these right here. They're zinnias. And there's lots of different colors, but they're gorgeous. They just came out really gorgeous. Look, look, there's even an orange one. As we leave the garden right here behind me then are the fruit trees. There's two plums, two pears, and two apples. And then right here, we've got a bunch of sunflowers that Jules planted, although they're not flowering yet. Hopefully they will though, pretty soon. Some do have heads though, like this one, this one. They're just... They're just not, they just weren't in time for the wedding. <laughs> That's okay, they still look pretty. This right here is the south side of the house. Right behind me back here is where the wedding ceremony was and the garden is right over there. Now, a lot of people commented on us planting clover instead of grass, right? Because most people think of a lawn, they think of grass. Well, we planted clover because supposedly clover is nitrogen fixing, meaning that it doesn't need a lot of nitrogen in the soil. It actually gets it out of the air somehow and then it puts it into the soil. But anyway, clover grows really well here and it doesn't get very tall. So if you weren't to mow it, you would just basically have a, a decently tall lawn. That's why we planted clover. All right, we're gonna go south on the property now, out towards the chickens, new spot. Over here was where we had our reception. We had a big tent put up here, a 40 by 40. And the chickens are down here behind Marty. If you guys have been watching us for a while, you know that we had to replace our whole flock with new chickens um, and we got them all from chicks. So we moved them out here to their new location and we have them secured right now with a, a Premier One electric fencing. Seems to be working out really well so far. Nothing's got them and they haven't flown out. Let's go inside. Check them out, huh? Yeah. Everybody loves chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Jules was going to try to catch one. They're not quite 100% friendly yet, huh? No. After I moved them out here, I didn't have as much interaction with them. So they're not, they're not quite as friendly as I'd wanted them to be. This one right here is our rooster that you guys helped name. is Mr. Roo. <laughs> I'm training the new flock. To come to me with these mealworms, so let's, let's practice. Come on, guys, let's have a training session. <laughs> chick, 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 is actually where the new shop is going to go. So hopefully next spring, we'll actually start building a shop right here. Not sure what size it is gonna be, 40 by 60 possibly. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but come over here with me. All right, we were right up here looking at that clover and right in that area on that flat spot right there where that birch tree is, that's where we're actually hopefully gonna be putting a greenhouse this fall and getting it ready for spring planting next spring so i know somebody in the comments is going to ask why do you have three outhouses and a hand washing station out in the wasteland that is because we have some very generous and kind friends who actually got these for everybody at the wedding to be able to use. This was the parking area. It was jam packed full of cars. And we wanted a place that people could come and actually use the restroom without having a really long line at the bathroom in the house. So thank you very much, Mike and Laura, for providing these for everybody. I'm gonna use it right now. <laughs> Ooh, gonna wash your hands. Yeah, there's still water in it. It's cool. So convenient we need to have one of these down here yeah right by the chicken coop so when you're done with the chickens you can wash your hands yeah. paper towels in the winter time it might freeze but <laughs> besides that it's good mm -hmm. so sarah didn't really want the tractor in her wedding pictures so we moved it and all of its implements over here to the wasteland right now we have a grapple on it but we also have a bucket a snow plow and pallet forks and by the way this is a yanmar 59 horse tractor if you look back here in the background, we are standing in the wasteland where the new shop is going to go. And it looks like the house is like way far away. 
it is a little bit far away but the plan is is to have a snow blower and then just blow a path down to the shop and then blow a path back up to the house uh, during winter when it's snowing a lot just bring that snow blower back and forth from the house to the shop every time you go out there and then you won't have a problem with snow buildup also if you look right over this way come with me come with me and you look right down here this is actually access to our road right here you come off of the road in front of the house it circles around and then enters our property again so that you can drive right into the shop without having to drive through the front yard let's cruise down this way right here we're heading kind of west on the property this is the road that i would drive in to actually get to the shop and uh, we're going to cruise down this way and go through the woods through an old logging road on our property which will take us to the old defunct hand dug well that we tried to do a few years ago on the property here and if you haven't seen the video to digging that hand dug well well there is a link down in the description below you can check it out we're going into the woods right down here lots of cool pine cones in the road like this guy right here yeah that's kind of on the small side yeah, i know there were some bigger like, ones look at that one right there oh yeah here's a bigger one wow those are so cool pretty cool it's like as big as your head almost <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> All right, so after a nice little walk in the woods, we come into this area that's kind of open because we cleared a lot of the small trees that were right in this area so that we could drive down here and bring supplies down for actually drilling the well. But now in this area here, this is actually kind of a natural clearing or at least we didn't clear it, it was cleared already. And so there was a lot of ferns in here. It was really moist. And that's why we decided to go ahead and try and put the well in here, but it doesn't work. There's way too much silt. We dug down to 18 feet, we hit water. Water wasn't the issue. The amount of silt that was in there was the issue. Every time you use the well, it came up like chocolate milk. And then all of that sediment just settled in the well pipe and it wouldn't work after that. You'd have to take the whole thing out, clean it all out, put it back in, pump it again, and every time you had to actually clean the pipe out of sediment. So we abandoned it, and that's why we put in the oh-so-excellent regular deep well. I know we didn't go into detail about our solar system, so if you would like to have a detailed overview of our off-grid solar system, let me know down in the comments below. But that is gonna pretty much do it. I think you saw basically everything here on the homestead and hopefully you have a better overview and kind of picture in your mind when we're working on different projects in different places. Yeah, where we're at in relationship to other things. I think that's gonna help you out. We hope you guys have a really great day. Keep, Keep smiling. smiling.